He sends us this list like, fellas, do you agree with this? It's the uh, most electrifying uh, college football players of all time. And I want to read the list, right? So the list is number one, Reggie Bush. Number two, Michael Vick. Number three, Adrian Peterson. Number four, Vince Young. Number five, Charles Woodson. Number six, Johnny Manziel. Number seven, Lamar Jackson. Number eight, Devin Hester. Number nine, Tyron Matthew. And number 10, Ted Ginn Jr. So, interesting list, right? Interesting list. Those mm-hmm. on YouTube will probably slide it in after we write, read, uh, read over it so you guys can see it. But we felt like in this, in our group chat, we're like, there's some people that are left off that list that probably need to be on. And there's some people on that list that you necessarily should probably take off. So, Trey, I'm going to just – I'm going to pitch it to you right off the bat. Like, who do you feel, whether it's one, two, three, four people, shouldn't be on that list, and who should they be replaced by? Okay. First off, let me just say how disappointed I am to not see three certain players. Okay. Where is Randy Moss? Whew. Where is Tommy Frazier? And where is Darren McFadden? Those those are my I I'm rocking the DMAC jersey right, right now. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, that's what I got on. Obviously, I've got a, a, a different connection and a little bit of a bias there, but I'll make an argument right now, real quick. Randy Moss, there's no reason why Ted Ginn Jr. should be over Randy Moss. Your only argument is well, he played at Marshall. Okay, go watch. Like, if we're talking most electrifying players of all time, we're basically talking about their highlight tape, correct? Right, 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 right. I mean, that's essentially, like, if we want to boil it down, we're talking about their highlight tape. You go watch a Randy Moss highlight tape, compare it to a Ted Ginn Jr. highlight tape, and and tell me that Moss should not be on this list. I'm not knocking Ted Ginn Jr. and what he did at Ohio State. I'm I'm not saying that, but, like, Randy Moss was a Heisman finalist coming out of Marshall. And here's, just in case you didn't know, had Moss stayed at Florida State, he would have done the same exact thing. Like, oh, he was on a whole nother level. And what's proof of that is his rookie year in Minnesota. So you can't use right. an argument that, oh, he played at Marshall. So that, that takes away from how electrifying he was as a player. Give me a break. So Randy Moss, in my opinion, should at least be in the top three. He should be up oh, there with yeah. Reggie, Vic, and him. That's my opinion. Now, that was right. one of the players – in the heart of my childhood that like, I mean, he was it. He was the, the yeah, next he's a one. Verb. He's a verb. That's just absolutely. You've been mossed. He's a absolutely. Verb. Have you ever heard <laughs> someone say, say hey, he just got, he just got ginned. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> hey, kids still say you've been mossed. So that, that's, that's the still what they say. Right. Yeah. Kids are saying it now and they don't even know where it came from. Right. Exactly. It's exactly. its own word. Okay. My second one, Tommy Frazier. And now, granted, remember, Corey did say the kicker is... You have to be alive to see them play. You have to be alive to have seen them play. And so, for me, I went with Tommy Frazier, the former Nebraska uh, quarterback, just because that's the first player that, like, I really remember watching. And, Mm -hmm. like, like, I, I mean, gosh, I had to have been... Seven, six, seven, no, seven or eight, somewhere in there. Okay. Six, seven, eight. I think like six, seven, eight years old was when, like, it's crazy. It was like, it was when I was the age of my daughter now. And I like right. vividly remember looking forward to watching Nebraska play so I could watch Tommy Frazier. He was on the cover of NCAA football 97, yep. I believe yeah. it was, yeah. um, for Sega Genesis. I had that. But he, he had one of, to me, one of the greatest runs of all time it was either in the orange bowl fiesta bowl whatever whatever uh bowl they beat florida um where he like it's like he broke the entire team's tackle (laughs) and then ran you know all the way down the field now the argument you can make against him was he did miss a lot of time because i think it was like blood clots in his leg so he there was one season where he was um he was sidelined for a lot of the year but Mm -hmm. to me He's got to be on here somewhere. I mean, I feel like I could make an argument to put him on this list over Devin Hester. Be- not not taking away from Devin Hester, but if you look at his college career, I mean, he has that one viral punt return, yeah, I think, against Duke. But, like, if we're looking at the entire body of work, in my opinion, like, Tommy Frazier should be on here over him. And then my last one, like I said, was Darren McFadden. Yeah. Darren McFadden got hosed out of a Heisman trophy. And in my opinion, twice in a row, the first one was with Troy Smith and 
McFadden had just ran through the SEC all season long. This was when the Wildcat came on the scene yep. and went to an SEC championship game. If not for a true freshman trying to fair catch a punt on the goal line, Arkansas wins that game against Florida. Remind you, that Florida team absolutely destroyed Ohio State that year. Yep. To me, Darren McFadden should have won the Heisman that year. And then, and so let's say you don't give it to him then. The next season, when Tebow won it, McFadden ran for 321 yards against Steve Spurrier's South Carolina team, and Spurrier still did not give McFadden the vote. <laughs> and that, to me, I, I mean, you know, it's it's a little Heisman fraternity. He gave it to right. his Gator boy. I mean, I get all that, but, like, you can't look me in the eye or any true college football fan in the eye and tell me that Darren McFadden should not have a Heisman trophy right now. I'm not saying give him both of them, but what I'm saying is, is one of those two years, he deserved it. Right. And he's back-to-back -back Doak Walker Award winner. And really put Arkansas like on the like on the SEC map, if yeah. you really want to think about it. I mean, like, not that they hadn't been to an SEC championship, but I mean like college game day came to Fayetteville right. Right. when McFadden was there. I mean, he he really had us on the SEC national landscape map and what he did for the university and what he did, in my opinion, for college football, because then Shortly after that, you see uh, Ronnie, was it Ronnie Brown in Miami? Yeah, yeah. Going off, running in the Wildcat. I mean, right, like. Right, right, right. Well, he was at Auburn. He got drafted. No, no, no. But when he went to the Dolphins. Oh, yeah, when he went to the Dolphins. Okay, I'm saying it transferred yeah, yeah. to, it transferred yeah. To like, NFL. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So, and, and McFadden was the catalyst for all that. So, in my opinion, I, I, I could make an argument to put him on here over the Honey Badger, which, don't get me wrong, the Honey Badger was electrifying. electrifying he was a great player, um, especially that 2011 season. But again, if I'm looking at the body of work, and of course, I've got some hog bias here. Those are my three that I believe should be on there. So I'm done with that. It's all hmm. you. So I was, I've been in, in, in flux about three to two people, right? So since you went three, okay. I'll go three. I think I could have just leaned two. Um, so obviously, Ted Ginn, nothing because he's an Ohio State guy. He was amazing at Ohio State. And I'm not putting on him on there. You already said Randy Moss. Um, but here would be my third, and it's because he's most recent. I would say Christian McCaffrey. Now, he fell into Ooh. the Pac-12 bias because it's late night. Most people aren't staying up to watch Stanford. But, man, mm. I don't think people really realize, unless you're a true college football fan, how great Christian McCaffrey was at Stanford. I mean, yes. the dude was running in a pro-style, run-heavy offense. Yes. You knew what was coming, and, I mean, it was explosive. He was one of the few players I remember, like, if he gets the ball in his hands, you're unsure if – you're going to yeah. stop him. And there's yeah. a very small group collect collective of college football players that had you on edge like, let me see what happens when the ball touches his hands. I believe Reggie Bush was that guy. Like, yes. you were like, you 100%. held your breath when the ball got into his hands. And I've, I believe Christian McCaffrey had that at Stanford. Obviously, I believe if he goes to a more productive or talent-based program, maybe the profile's a little higher. But to see what he did at Stanford and to see how electrifying it is, and I'm just going to say, man, the guy's a white running back. So, like, I think that just added to it as well, man, where people were just like, oh, my God. And man, and, yeah. and we and we see that it wasn't just like a, a gimmick in college. We see what he's doing in the pros. So we see yes. it translated over really well. Um, And I dare I say he kind of, like, started transforming this, like, running back position over the last four to five years where – you're not just a runner. You got to be a pa a playmaker out of the backfield. Like now, mm. we know we have kind of started trending that way with the spread offense. But I'm going to say Christian McCaffrey really kind of started changing that in the NFL because when he was getting drafted coming out of Stanford, everyone's like, "Oh, what what is he going to do in the NFL?" You know, he's not a downhill running back because you remember that was Reggie Bush's whole play. Is he going to be yes. a downhill? And I think by the time he kind of got to the NFL, it became it was more acceptable based upon what he did. Was if we're going to spend a high draft pick on this guy. We need yeah. to figure out how to maximize his skill set. And yes. you become now a playmaker out of the backfield, not just a running back. So I like Christian yes. McCaffrey there. Here's a name, man. Only true college football fans I think will believe. And if we're going off electrifying, this means highlight tapes. Highlight tapes, right? Yeah. Go YouTube, and this is my guy, Tavon Austin. Ooh, yeah, West Virginia. West Virginia. Ooh. Now, 
Yes. Now, Tavon, shout out to Tavon. He's actually running a sports camp down in Fort Myers, Florida. He's back home. Um, and it's funny because he was coming in after me. He was like a senior after I graduated. He had just moved to Prosper, Texas, was supposed to play. The whole thing with Dion ends up going back home. But if you go look at that man's highlight tape, Tavon Austin is probably one of the most electrifying players that has ever played college football. The dude's a human Highlight reel. I don't think I need to say a lot about him. Like, just go look at the highlight tape. I get it. He played in Morgantown at West Virginia. Not a big program, you know. Um, What's unfortunate, he came off the back end of the Rich Rod era. I believe if Rich Rod never leaves West Virginia, Tavon gets a little bit probably more hype than he deserved. I mean, than he than he received. Because you remember, he was coming off the tail end of the Steve, uh, what is it, uh, the Slayton, Steve, what is it, um, what's the guy's name? What's his? Pat White. Pat, Pat White and Slayton, yeah. that, that whole era, which was an amazing era at West Virginia. And I believe that's why Tavon was going to West Virginia. I mean, that was an offense that was electrifying, that would have showcased his talents. Rich Rod had West Virginia humming where it wasn't about size, it was about speed. Those dudes were just going to run you off the field. And um, yes. so I think I think, I think think uh, Tavon could sneak on that list. And my last but not I least. Think, real quick, I think it was Noel Devine was the prosper kid. Noel Devine was the prosper kid. You're right. You're but right. Ta- yeah. But 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 Tavon right. Austin was still in the same era that you're the, the time frame you're referring to. That's but, right. Noel Devine. And he's the, the one guy. whose highlight tape I I I, I yeah. couldn't agree more with him. Noel Devine's highlight tape is great too. You know, because him and Tavon are almost like the same player. I think Tavon's a little bit better. You're right. No Noel Devine is yes. the guy from Prosper. My my apologies. And he's running a camp in Fort Myers, Florida. Because I just saw him like a month ago. So, but <laughs> Tavon, T- Tavon is that guy. Go look at Tavon Austin's highlight reel if you don't believe me. And man, my last guy would be, um, man, the man himself, Cam Newton, bro. Oh, I don't yeah. understand how you don't put Cam. Let me put it like this. Cam yeah. Newton single-handedly won the national title in his only year as a starter at <laughs> Auburn. At <laughs> Auburn. Now, the year – I don't think only one person on that team goes to the NFL besides Cam, which is Nick Fairley. He was drafted by my Detroit Lions. Um, we thought we were getting a steal, and he, like, flamed out on his rookie contract. Um, but he made it to the big leagues. But the next year, I think that team at Auburn goes, like – they only win, like, three games, maybe four. And it was, like, Cam Newton was must-see TV. Must-see, like – and every and I remember that year because everybody kept going – it's a gimmick. They're going to figure it out. There's no way he can take Auburn to the national title game. And he willed a team he did. through the SEC gauntlet. Like, yes. I don't think people understand how good the SEC was yes. in that era. There was no playoff. It was just the BCS. The top two teams are going to play for the national title. And he will. Because I think what is the Bama game? He was, like, behind at halftime. Yeah, 21 points. And will. I mean, that was an amazing game. So I, I believe you put Cam Newton off the list just off the strength that, hey, man, he won a national title by himself, by himself. I've never yes. seen a player do that in college football ever, like ever. Every well, other guy on this list had a good team around him. Well, just to kind of support what you're saying, I just looked it up. First off, Bama won the national championship in 09, 11, and 12. Okay. So so I'm pretty sure – yeah, because Ohio State didn't win. Yeah, so they were, were 11 because they beat LSU, and I think 12 they beat Notre Dame. So basically 9, 11, and 12, so 10 was Cam. In those three seasons, so the season before Cam got there and the two seasons after Cam had left, the Auburn football team won a combined 19 games. So in three seasons, 19 games. Wow. In Cam's one season there, they won 14. So that, <laughs> I mean, that numbers don't lie. So, Numbers don't lie. He he should have been on that, man. So th- those are my top three. I'm going Christian McCaffrey. I'm going Tavon Austin. And I'm going Cam Newton. 